get started. Uh, so this is the agenda for today's meeting. Uh, we have a couple of, uh, we have YU going to present. We'll review the action points, um, um, the usual uh, wiki where we keep our um, action items or action points. And um, we'll go over the document updates. Uh, I'm not sure what is AOV, Loa, that you added there. Uh, and now the business. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other business? Uh, before I pro proceed with the first item, anyone wants to bash this agenda or add items to it, uh, feel free to speak up. Okay, I'm not hearing anyone coming to the mic or unmuting. Um, so we'll go ahead with the first item on the agenda, which is the action item uh, review. Um, we have a wiki for that. I thought I opened it. Looks like I did not. Uh, let me open it again. Okay, so um, the first uh, open item on our list is the um, uh, requirements draft. Uh, the comments received on the requirements draft. I believe there were a couple of updates uh, made and you probably will talk about them. Uh, so let me in the meantime, uh, capture what uh, you want to say, if anything. Uh, so let me uh, ask Stuart and, uh, and uh, Matthew, if they want to comment on this or hold off until you give an update. Um, just briefly now to mention that that we responded to the the comments that we received in uh, in the GitHub and also in the ones in email we pasted into the GitHub and we've um, tried to address them in a new version of the requirements draft which we posted earlier this week. Uh, you have posted the new revision. Sorry, I didn't capture that. Yes, yes. And I have updated the um, the wiki page for for the requirements draft as well. I, I, I added a history on it, so it just shows what we've done. Uh, Matthew, did you post the revision to? Uh... I, I yeah yeah, yeah. not to the GitHub also so we can get to comment on it. Um, oh no, I haven't uh, uploaded it to GitHub, but we can we can do that. Okay, uh, I can um, update the action item. I'm not sure how to do that because you didn't put the version number on the original one on the GitHub. Uh, you just check out the, uh, the, the document and then update. Um, uh, I mean, uh, Git itself does the revisions. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so and, and that will separate the comments from the old and the comments from the new. We can barely hear you, Stewart. Uh, uh, will that separate the comments from the old from the comments from the new? So when we load a new version and it gets commented, will the comments be in isolation or will they be? Yeah, every every revision will have its own a chance to get commented on. It doesn't right, do okay. the merging. They won't, they won't muddle them up. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, strangely, your voice today is very faint. I don't know, maybe you changed your mic or... Headset. Take my headset and microphone. Is, 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 um, that was better for you, right? Is it, is it your tweet? I can barely hear you. Okay, I'll change. I'll look at my audio settings. 
Okay. Uh, all right. The next next item on our uh, action point list is to talk about. I mean, the, the 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 action item was to discuss the policy for putting data in stack versus auto stack. There was a couple of talks about this given by Kuriti. Uh, there was a follow up needed to refresh the draft uh, and add uh, relevant content uh, regarding this. Um, Kuriti, were you able to refresh the draft or maybe it's still an uh, open item? Still an open item, sorry. Okay. Actually, the draft has also um, expired, so I do definitely need to update it. <clears throat> there was another, the next action item was to gather more input uh, from the design team vendors and implementers um, on the feasibility of the, the approach we're taking with respect to uh, action indicators and and flags. Um, so we have a wiki that we created uh, last week or the week before actually. Um, uh there was a promise to give a talk about this and i think why you is on the agenda for today uh, just to get the acknowledgement uh why you you're going to talk about this today okay okay thank you um anything else we want to mention in this regards um the, the wiki is created so please contribute to it it's still, uh, um, I'll give a pointer to it on our main uh, uh, page, but you know, it's, it's for whoever is, wants to contribute with their opinions on it. Okay. The next item was the uh, design directives. Uh, it, it uh, Hopefully it's on the agenda today. If there is room. It's not. It's not, huh? You can add it at the end if you want. Yeah. If we, if we can come to it, um, depending on time permitting, then we want to review it and uh, progress on this action item. Okay. Uh, um, the next action item we have was to, uh, uh, add more content or uh, more content or more description. Uh, about the user defined action uh, in the oh, action uh, actions user defined actions and user user defined um, flags if you want um, this is something that uh, we did not progress on uh, recently uh, but I believe uh, Kiriti is willing to add more content in his draft about this. Um, I don't have much to add to this. I was uh, I did not do much last week on on this item. Kiriti, uh, you... are you talking about um, the generalized? The, yeah. Okay. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so w w one one way to approach this is to add content in the draft and let people comment on it, or or we can add it to agenda of next week. Uh, or both? Yeah, uh, we can do both. I can update the draft in between and then um, we can put it on the agenda for next week. Um, the last item on the action point list is to, uh, I think it's an item that we agreed on, so I'm going to close it. 
was to um, find a place where we log all the comments for the requirements uh, spec document. And we agreed it's going to be in GitHub. And I think uh, that was the agreement. So I'll close this action item for now, unless uh, someone disagrees. Okay. Okay, that was our action point list. Now we go back to the agenda. <clears throat> the next point we have is the presentation that why you will uh, well, we'll, we'll talk about the analysis on the cost and performance for parses, different header design styles. I'll uh, stop sharing right there and uh, give the ball back to Payu. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you see my uh, screen? Yes, yes, I can see it. Okay. Um, yeah, today I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, some um, <clears throat> analysis on the packet header parsing performance and cost uh, in hardware. And the purpose of uh, this presentation is um, to help us to understand the general hardware architecture for parser. And uh, also it means to provide some guidance for the new header design. Um, any um, proposal we have uh, should provide some zero cost performance analysis to justify it. So this uh, uh, presentation will give a few uh, examples to show uh, why uh, some designs uh, um, it, uh, it is good and some is uh, uh, not necessary um, an optimization. So, so first, uh, um, I uh, talked about this uh, before, but I want to recap uh, about the hardware, uh, general hardware architecture for packet processing and forwarding. Uh, so here you can see uh, a cheap um, block diagram and also uh, an abstract figure shows um, usually uh, in such kind of chips, we will have a front end passer, which is responsible to extract all the header fields um, which is interested for the following uh, processing pipeline. Um, and uh, meanwhile, uh, the, the full packet will be um, uh, buffered and, and, uh, and the egress side, the, the processed header will merge with uh, uh, the packet again um, and pass through the so-called depasser. Uh, which uh, is uh, basically uh, reassemble the packet um, with uh, updated headers. And uh, so um, actually packet parser is only uh, a small components in the system and it's a, uh, it is very high performance and uh, uh, so it can provide the line speed processing. And the major uh, heavy lifted work is done actually in the uh, ingress uh, in the in the match action pipeline. Um, so, so let's take a closer look at the uh, the parser uh, in hardware. Um, basically, um, the each parser is uh, described as a, a directed graph. Uh, or a finite state machine. And uh, then in this state machine, uh, each state uh, actually is not necessarily uh, corresponding to a header. It's totally de uh, depend on how you design your header. Um, uh, for example, in a simple simple uh, header chain, and then and uh, each header with a fixed uh, uh, length and uh, no uh, format, then is is correspond to one state just, but if uh, you uh, use um, some type of TLV or the header is a variable length, 
uh, or you uh, encode some other fields in the uh, to indicate a field in the header to indicate the following headers, then you might need a, uh, a lot more state to pass a single header. <clears throat> and uh, you, you here is a, a example um, uh, finite state machine. You can see it uh, uh, from the layer two uh, to layer three to layer four, and uh, and the the each each node is basically um, just a, uh, it, uh, just a, a header in the in the packet. And uh, you also see here is a uh, transitions from a node to another node because the edge. So each edge here will be record, will be a, a table entry lookup table entry. Um, so so. Uh, how many, uh, what's the storage of the, your parser will be determined by the total number of edges in your, in your state machine. And uh, how you do the lookup, basically, um, from starting from the first default header, uh, it's, a, it's in the default state, you will, uh, you will extract, use a state plus a field, help you identify the next header as an input to the TCAM. So the TCAM will uh, uh, will return uh, you uh, a, a value which contains the next state and uh, the field um, and and uh, also uh, it, it uh, extracts the uh, net uh, the the relevant fields uh, from the current header uh, to for future use and uh, also in the next state uh, and uh, uh, it knows what the uh, next field you will uh, you are looking for. So then you you again extract the 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 field the, the field from next header. Then then you keep keep do the uh, TCAM lookup. Then you just uh, keep uh, doing this until finally you reach the last state. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, any, any question here? So yeah, let's let's continue. So basically, we should have a uh, two metrics to um, evaluate the performance on the cost. The first is the storage cost, uh, and as said, as I said uh, before, the basically the number of uh, edges in the uh, F FSM uh, graph is a uh, the entry number of entries in the lookup table is determined the uh, is determine the storage cost, and also uh, we should also care the size of each entry, right? Um, the size uh, is uh, determined by the state ID, uh, just uh, and plus uh, some the, the relevant header fields. Um, so um, usually this is not a concern um, because uh, we usually assume we have a um, a small number of uh, state, uh, so so maybe eight bits is enough to uh, cover up to to fifty six state, um, and also the usually the the header fields used to identify the next uh, state uh, is a uh, small could be uh, eight bits or sixteen bits. So so typically the size is uh, the overall entry size can be. Uh, as small as uh, 32 bits. That's a, so that's a one entry size. So so the 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 um, uh, dominant factor is the number of entries. So you 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 cannot have uh, too many transitions in your finite state machine. Uh, if that's the case, it will uh, um, make the storage cost very high. And the second is the performance metric is the parsing speed and the latency. Um, so we have a, a, a average case and the worst case. So the worst case is a very simple. It's simply the longest pass in your finite state machine graph. So in uh, this uh, lower uh, picture example, you will see the longest pass maybe uh, involve three steps from uh, no no one, uh, one from Ethernet to VLAN to VLAN to IPv6 to UDP. It involves uh, five and uh, one to four four transitions. So 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 you 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 can say in this case um, 
worst case, uh, the, the parsing speed is limited by this worst case. It's involved four transitions. Um, but uh, there's also the average case. Every case uh, depends on uh, what's, a, what's the type of packets actually um, uh, appear in your network. Uh, if the majority of packets are simply Ethernet plus IPv4 plus UDP, then you can see here you just need uh, two uh, transitions uh, in your, uh, in your um, um, packet in the most cases then the average case performance will be determined by this. So, so in this talk, we, uh, I'd like to uh, analyze uh, majorly two types of uh, different header design styles. The first one is uh, the header chain. The header chain simply means we stack this um, um, uh, the, the, the headers appear in the, uh, in the package. Uh, one by one, and uh, also in the previous header, there will be uh, there will be a field to indicate what's the type of the next header. So this is uh, the uh, common practice used uh, today. And the second style um, we we have uh, uh, seen several proposals in, in this uh, uh, design team is uh, uh, basically we use a bitmap catalog. Plus the header list. So the, this catalog in, involve, uh, is a bitmap, and we, in, in which uh, each bit indicate uh, the, the the appearance of uh, the, uh, or existence existence of uh, a header uh, somewhere below it. Now, for in this example, you can see we, I might have five uh, slots, uh, but the three uh, indicate we we probably have five. Um, uh, headers below it, but here we uh, only three of them actually exist. So, so we just mark those, uh, set those bitmap uh, bits in the bitmap to indicate uh, those headers. So this is a second style. So then we have a um, different. Um, actually, uh, we have a different uh, kind of uh, uh, implementation, uh, finite state machine implementation styles. Here I list all of them uh, for the uh, two type of uh, uh, header design styles. So you can see I, uh, in this table, I, each column, the first column just lists these two uh, high level design styles. And the second column is uh, the the finite state machine style, and the third column uh, is a uh, uh, number of TCAM entries which reflect the storage cost. Uh, the next column is the number of states. The number of states is actually uh, is not very important because uh, it, it's a, it's a uh, it's actually the number of transitions determine the storage cost. <clears throat> And the, net, the last column is uh, the parsing latency. Uh, in this case, uh, we assume uh, uh, we have uh, at most impossible headers, but in the packet only m of out of eight out, out of n uh, actually appear in the packet. So in this table, you can see n is the number uh, to pos total possible number of headers, and the m is uh, actual headers in this packet. So uh, let's take a close look at the um, bitmap catalog uh, finite state machine style one. Uh, in in this figure, you can see um, based from the bitmap uh, bitmap a uh, bitmap, we first need to examine the first bit. Then, if the first bit is one, we go to the uh, state H zero to process that header, and then we need to examine the second bit bit one or um so if so so you can see b0 has two branches means if b0 is zero uh, b0 the bit is a value is zero we directly go to bit one so you can see it follow this a simple uh uh finite state machine uh, structure and finally uh all the headers will be parsed so in this machine, you can see there are totally three n transitions, which means the cost, the storage cost, is a three n, three times n. 
and the latency, the worst case latency is M plus N, because there's maybe only M uh, headers actually exist in this package. So, but you can reduce the, number, the latency, reduce, reduce the latency to M plus one, uh, that's a that's a right side figure the the bitmap uh, uh, catalog FSM style two. So in this case, you can reduce uh, the worst case latency to M plus one, but you need to uh, actually significantly increase the number of uh, transitions. Here you take advantage of the GCAM's uh, ternary matching property, then you allow to. First, from starting from the, uh, the the BM state BM, you just uh, examine if the first bit is set or second bit or set or uh, third bit set. You you just uh, use this to you can in parallel detect this in parallel, and when you reach the a new state, which means a bit has been already examined, then you need to check all the other possibilities. So you can see in this figure, there's a lot of transitions. So the transition number is n plus two times n plus one divided by two is in the order of uh, n square. So it's a, if n is large, then, then the, the, this is a fairly large. Um, but for the simple header chains, we have uh, three possible uh, styles. The first style is a simply uh, we just, uh, we can, uh, this reflect, we can, in the TCAM, we just uh, ignore the state state field. We only look at the um, the, the next header field. So in, in that case, so each time we can just, uh, uh, based on the current, current uh, uh, next header field, we can just uh, follow this simple chain. You can see, this for this state machine, we only need M plus one storage size. Uh, no, 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 uh, no, no, actually, um, it should be M, M plus one because there could be N, N states. There's a, there's a type of right. But, uh, but the, the, the parsing latency is only M plus one. It depends on how many headers actually appear in this, uh, in this packet. So this is very simple. And we can use another style. It's so we always encode the next state uh, in the in the uh, and store it, store it in the TCAM. Then in that case, we actually uh, we need a, a two two n plus one uh, number of entries in the TCAM. And uh, in this case, the the parsing latency is two n plus one because it, each time, starting from the base state, we will examine the first header first, then we need to go back. Then we needed to examine the next header, then we go back to, to this base state. So the parsing latency uh, increases, uh, doubles actually. Um, we, we have a yet another style. Here is a header chain style two. So in this case, uh, we, also try to uh, reduce uh, the worst case passing latency to M plus one. And uh, then we, and each state, we just list all the other uh, possibility to reach other header state. So in this finest machine, you can see again, uh, the, the, the TCAM entries uh, number is uh, very large. It's uh, in the order of a square. So, but uh, but in this case, uh, the parsing latency is still only m plus one. Um, but uh, due to its a uh, high storage cost, we uh, shouldn't use uh, this kind of style. So based on all this analysis, we can see just using the simple header chain actually achieve uh, the minimum uh, storage TCAM storage cost and also the minimum parsing latency. So that's this ideal um, approach. Uh, in, 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 in contrast, if uh, we um, use a bitmap, uh, actually, it doesn't help us at increase the number of storage, set the storage size, and also uh, it doesn't necessarily improve the parsing latency. So 
the left side, you can see the, the figure. A uh, figure actually shows if the number of uh, possible headers and the, uh, uh, the y-axis shows the number of TCAM entries. Uh, you can see uh, as when the, when the number of possible headers uh, increase, the, the size of the different styles, uh, for the different styles, uh, storage cost actually uh, in increase and different pace. So we are, here I didn't list uh, each uh, header chain uh, style zero yet. Um, because that, but that's uh, that's also be uh, very uh, uh, correspond to the to the uh, HC one. It's uh, in the lowest range. And here, I also want to highlight some uh, further issues about the bitmap. The bitmap actually in, uh, in, uh, introduce inflexibility because here we enforce the fixed order. Of the headers possibly appear in the yeah, in the in the packet, and also uh, we fix the bit semantics. Uh, it, it, what what each bit means, we need to predefine it, and uh, also uh, it's hard to support future applications. For example, if you already uh, allocate the first bit in the bitmap, you you basically imply this packet if. If, if, if this header, if it appears, it will always be the first. But uh, what if in the future we find another, we, we will define another header? Uh, I think we think it should be appear first. Then in this case, we have no way to do that because, because we have already uh, allocated uh, the first bit. And also, it has a poor extensibility. We have to uh, use uh, some other mechanics to allow um, to allocate more bits uh, if we want to support more ex more headers in the future. And of course, uh, there could be uh, um, uh, some benefit of the benefit, uh, of the bitmap. Uh, it means uh, a win. there's no need to include a type field in each header again, because uh, the meaning of the header has already been defined in this bit bitmap. Then uh, it implies a possibly overall smaller header overhead. And further, I I want to talk about why the TLV should be avoided in the header design. So here, TLV uh, means a specific header format, um, which means the the first field is a type field followed by the length field, then followed by the the value. Um, so this is in, uh, to be uh, listed here in contrast to the header chain, where the type of the next header is uh, uh, actually encoded in the previous header. So which means when you're passing the previous pre previous header, you will know what's the type of uh, next header. But here you have to go to this header first uh, to examine the type and the length of it. Then you know what's a, what's a uh, value follow it. So this means one TLV header like this has to be considered as two headers in parser, uh, which means at least in the uh, finite state machine, it will be a correspond to, to two states. Uh, so this will inflate the state space storage and the parsing latency, of course. And even worse, if the value part is, in the, is of a variable length, then that need even more states uh, and state transitions. So we should try the best to avoid the TLV style and the variable size header in your design. And there's a, yet another encoding style is uh, uh, using pointers in header, which means we have a list of pointers. Each pointer tell the location of the uh, the, the the header is uh, in the in in the um, in the package. So uh, unfortunately, uh, at least uh, as far as I know, I uh, this kind of a header style cannot be described as a parser FSM um, uh, supported by P4 and the current switch A6. So of course, this is just based on my current uh, analysis, and uh, if uh, you have a, you know, a, you know, a solution or, um, you know, can 
can be used to compare with our, our earlier analysis. Uh, you are welcome to provide that. So, next slides I want to uh, talk about uh, how what the, some considerations on the necessity of uh, in stack data. So, my general posi uh, position. So, 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 I don't even hear me now. Um, I'd like to hear from some of the other, uh, some of the people who work for some of the other router vendors, whether how you use description fits um, where they think the world is and where the world is going. Because he described a P, essentially a P4 world, and I'm not convinced that P4 is the only world out there. No, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not only P4. It's also applied for the uh, other, um, you know, fixed uh, function ASICs from other vendors. So they all define their um, parser uh, in, uh, like this, follow the same architecture. Uh, sorry, uh, um, if I can jump in, uh, you said you just said all other vendors. We have a fixed uh, parsing machine, uh, uh, you know, fixed uh, parsing engine. Uh, we also have a very flexible parsing engine. Neither of them follows this. Um, I'm not a hardware expert, but I don't, you know, so, I don't. Uh, can, can I finish? Yeah. Um, I don't believe that we should be doing designs in MPLS based on one or two architectures. We should be doing designs based on generic principles. Um, but I will, I mean, hopefully you'll make the slides available. Um, the, what I would like to do is to take this back to our ASIC team, uh, as well as the team that we have that implements on Broadcom, because I noticed that this is tied at four. Um, I'm not familiar with uh, with uh, either of them, but I would like to get their feedback in terms of um, how well this reflects our parsing and how well this reflects uh, the cost um, and and you know are there other strategies for implementing this? So I appreciate your uh, bringing uh, this level of detail to this, but at the same time I think um, becoming so sort of wedded to one particular architecture, or even if it's a class of architectures, this does not constitute all the chips that are used uh, in, in forwarding today. It would be useful to yeah. also hear from, uh, I don't know whether Matthew, whether you're, you're, you can talk about what your parsing uh, system does, but it would also be interesting to hear from Cisco. Just to, to make sure, and, and I think I'm kind of in Karita's camp here, which is we should design it the way we think it should be designed. Um, right. Yep. Yeah. So, so uh, hang on, John Drake, John Drake is under there somewhere. Yeah. What uh, what I had already stipulated was as part of the process that any proposal needed to be vetted by the hardware engineers of all of the involved people. Indeed. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you guys. That's why I raise all of this. I, I because I I believe any design we will have will should based on the real analysis analysis uh, like this. So otherwise we cannot justify uh, what our uh, claims. You know, usually we give a design idea. We will say, okay, this is good for the um, for the uh, implementation, but that's actually just our impression. We don't have evidence. We, we do need evidence, and Indeed. that's one. Yeah, that's one point. Second point is, uh, although I show it's so, okay, it's uh, some uh, ASIC hardware today designed like this, but uh, the method to pass uh, the model use FSM uh, to pass uh, to to pass the headers. And this is uh, I I believe this is a generic idea. You can uh, use a parallelism to uh, or whatever. I maybe there's some tricks to improve that. That's a fundamental logic, right? We, we always uh, understand something based on the previous knowledge and current state and some new inf input to get the next one. So that we cannot, uh, um, you know, do anything beyond that. So that's my, um, yeah, so so I, I think, okay, you are welcome to uh, provide this, uh, this uh, ask your uh, hardware team or uh, or any from any other vendors to give input. Uh, about this. Um, I, I, 
Yeah. I noticed that we don't have anyone from Cisco on the um, in the design team. Um, so we, we, they will also have a a view on whether this is a, a reasonable sort of hardware paradigm to be uh, using in our decision process. So there's there. I am really worried that. I mean, it's a good piece of work, but I'm really worried that it is just one class of how things are done. Uh, we also need to know about the software parts, the fully software parsers, which are also uh, becoming important. Um, right. Uh, not also. We've been doing software parsing for since 2007, so it's it's not something new. Actually, earlier, but um, um, so but but to add to your point. FSMs are not the only way to parse things. So we have many different ways of doing things. Yeah. And the software parser we use uses very long instruction words. So um, clearly that's, this that's does not capture. Uh, my nested machine, I'm sorry, maybe you don't model it, but uh, this, the, the, each step you go forward, you, you'll do something similar to that. If you have a totally different way, you are welcome to present it. Um, I'm not sure I will present it. Um, the, the, the point is that, uh, I mean, there are lots of things that are uh, internal. Um, uh, um, these are not chips that are, you can get on the market. So when it comes to, yeah. What, I, what my stipulation was that the hardware people had to say yes or no. They don't have to explain why they say yes or no. Indeed. I agree with you, John. Yeah, so, so um, that, that's fine. I, I think uh, the high level idea, you don't need to, of course, you don't need to expose, uh, you know, the details, but uh, you, you you need to give a high level idea to convince people. You, you cannot just say yes or no. I don't think that's acceptable. Well, I think um, it's up to the mean, group to decide that. Yes. So here, here's, I mean, the problem is there's a lot of internal IPR. Uh, owned in uh, these these parsers, and um, so and, and the thing the, the the reason that the IETF struggles with this is that it used to be in the old days that people very close to the parsing teams attended IETF and spoke about these things. That no longer happens, unfortunately, which puts us in a bit of a a bit of a, a, a quandary when we're doing what we're proposing to do to MPLS. Nonetheless, um, whatever we do. We, we can't design it around one parsing model. We have to be sure that it suits everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Or at least it suits, it suits people. So, Stuart, Stuart yep. question on that, on that. If you say it needs to suit everyone, is that potentially an impossibility. Well, yes, I, I mean, I, I appreciate that, but it should certainly su um, suit all of the people that we need to move in order to uh, have a have a viable uh, design concept. So, if it turns out that we've got a you know a really good design for um, you know these changes to the MPLS stack and uh, Cisco, who I no longer work for, right, can't do it, I would I would speculate that it's dead in the water. It's similar so, for other major players. So, I think so. First consideration is uh, we already have a lot of uh, um, existing chips today. Which way? Uh, you design something, you will see, okay, it might be only suitable for the future hardware with the new architectures. Maybe that's a concern for today. Uh, well, so, I, I think the vendors need to speak for themselves to that because, because yeah. quite frankly, okay. If the vendors can't support it, yeah. um, or, or, or it's not in their strategic direction, okay. the idea is probably dead. Yeah. So okay. I, I want to add to something that you said, Stuart, that, you know, we have changed our hardware in pretty dramatic ways in response to requirements that have come up. So if we design to our current hardware, we're actually digging ourselves deeper in a hole that we may not want to be in. If we say this is what we would like the hardware to do, if current hardware can't support it, that's a problem. But if it can support it, but not ideally, uh, you know, not optimally. But as you go forward, uh, you know, you you modify the hardware because that is important. Um, I think then we'll actually end up in a better place where we do a combination of 
fit in current hardware to the extent that it's needed to, but also set the direction for the hardware to evolve to meet the needs of MPLS. So rather than being constrained by the hardware, at least not you know, fully constrained by the hardware, we should understand what the current hardware can do. And of course, there are so many different styles of it. And we should also be setting uh, what we want the hardware to do, because this is what MPLS needs. No, I, 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 I agree with you. I, I, I just, just, just didn't want us to end up going down, you know, only being mindful of one uh, design track, which is where this talk was taking us. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, also, like, I'd like to add that um, no, no matter what new design we will have, we have to um, demonstrate it's, it can be better than this. Uh, than the uh, simple header chain style zero. If you you need to beat that, or you it, it will spend some other um, um, benefits, dominant benefits. We have to do that. So because of here, I I show it's already very simple. I I, I can't imagine anything simpler than this. So if you have a, a, a want to adopt a new design, you have to beat it. So that's my point. Uh, I, I'm not uh, sure I have, I'm not sure I support that, but I, I I think there needs to be a proper discussion with people who know what the future directions and possible uh, architectures are. And they probably aren't going to say a lot. Uh, it's just a great pity that they aren't we aren't so engaged with those communities as we used to. We can do that indirectly, so I can yeah, talk yeah. to our uh, our, yeah. our ASIC team. But but the other thing is, I think um, this idea that this is you know so simple. I mean, simple is not what we're looking for. I mean, we don't want anything overly complex. But um, we don't want uh, Ignas or uh, Ignas. Um, sorry if I mispronounce the name. Um, uh, mentioned in in the chat that you know, people do things in parallel today. I mean, everything happens in parallel today. So the finite state machine uh, and the linear sequence through things does not capture the state of the world, state of the art. So, I mean, this, this blanket statement is like, this is the simplest possible and this is the best way of doing it, um, it I, I think is a little too simple. It's no blind. I already uh, summarized two metrics once so uh, size, the table size. Another is a uh, latency, the, the possible uh, parsing latency. I think we need some uh, these metrics. If you think there are some other metrics, uh, you can also provide that, and we can uh, an analyze this on, on that dimension. But we have to have some solid metrics to evaluate that. We cannot just say okay. Um, um, otherwise, we cannot compare these schemes. So, um, so I think let's continue. I, I have a few slides uh, left. Before you continue, um, I have a couple of points um, for you. Well, the first one is I heard some assumptions that um, I don't remember we made that you're trying to uh, highlight. One of them is the order of the bit of the bit dictates the mm -hmm. order of the TLV. Uh, yeah. I don't think that we we adopted this. We didn't say that. The, or the position yeah, I, I I understand that there are other proposals to have a um, um, flexible or user defined um, no no no. Uh, no even the standardized one I don't think that the position of the bit map uh, dictates the position of the ancillary data uh, in, in you know uh, I don't think at least we discussed that. Uh, yeah, if you don't, um, then that then might be even more complex because of one benefit of that is uh, you in, imply the order of the header that can help you actually reduce uh, the cost of the, the state machine. But okay. if you if you don't uh, use a, a order of bits to imply the order of header, that makes things more complex. Uh, I mean that I'm just highlighting that we did not converge on that idea that the order of yeah, yeah. or the position of the of the flag or the bitmap dictates the position of the ancillary data. I didn't okay. think we talked about that. The number two, 
Um, if you go back to the two um, uh, approaches, you had them one on the left and one on the right. Uh, just wanna, uh, yeah, here. okay, yeah. So if you, if if the orange bit is not set, do you agree that, you know, or actually if none of the bits is set, although you're carrying ancillary data, do you agree that the transit node will uh, will not need to parse any of the ancillary data? Do you agree on on that? Uh, can, can you say, say again, or what was your question? So using the approach on the right hand side, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If none of the bits is set, mm -hmm. although you're carrying ancillary data, the transit node does not need to parse uh, the, the ancillary yeah, data. Yeah, that's possible. If you, um, but the point is, if you still need to parse uh, something below the, uh, the H3, for example, then if you H1, H2, H3 doesn't exist, then you still need to continue, right? Because yeah. uh, your accept state will depend on the last uh, header field you want to access in this packet. But if you don't need to go any further, you just want to check um, if there's any uh, header, uh, this this uh, extension header below it, then all, none, none of the bits is set. You can stop this, there. this can be solved with a simple val length in the, in the top header of the ancillary data and say jump to the end without parsing. But no, I, I, no, no, you, you, you cannot do that because okay. uh, you have what do you to, mean you, can't, what you, are we... you, you have to keep all these headers because you need the parser. The, the depositor, you need to reassemble the packet if you don't use this, uh, this header, because uh, you, you will say, okay, in this packet, it will parse up to 128 bytes. Then um, I have to keep all this uh, 128 bytes, uh, pass it to the depositor. Even none of that is changed. I need to use that to reassemble the package. Otherwise, those 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 header fields will lost. Will get lost. Yeah, that that thing. I I, I agree with the rest of the audience. We need to double check on. Um, I'm... Well, that depends on your design, doesn't it? I mean, you could have the bits up there for use during. Um... Uh, hot by hot parsing, and you could have a completely different structure, possibly uh, a shim before H1 to deal with the end to deal with the uh, delivery parsing. In which case, um, um, I think Tarek's point would would stand. Yeah, that that's a, that that's true. You, I agree. That depends on the design. In, in maybe in. In some new design, you can you can just uh, keep those uh, um, headers in between untouched. Then you jump to the location you are interested. Then finally, you can still reassemble them back to the original packet. That's that's possible. But I'm I'm just saying uh, it's not uh, like the current uh, um, design uh, uh, ASIC architecture, as far as I know. One last point uh, for you, all I would like to make is uh, the idea of setting those flags. I see it as powerful in the sense that it, the, the flags can be set by any or reset, set or reset by any node by a policy. You know, let, let's say, uh, you, you know, like the idea is you stop the function at any point uh, from progressing down uh, downward. You might so, see it, so, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I'm feeling that- So, this so for a, a good example might be to run you know, a partial trace route um, for a few hops and then clear the bit so that you don't waste your time looking down there afterwards. Exactly what I was, yeah, something like that. Uh, Stuart, yeah. But, yeah, clear the bit, but the header is still there. You yeah, mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. You keep the header and it will be popped by the egress, but the okay. function okay. is in that In that case, this header will have a no, uh, this bitmap will have no direct uh, 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 no, uh, will not be the indicator of the existence of the uh, header below it, right? Oh, well, that's the discussion then, we need to have. Is it, is, totally, it, is it? Then it has totally different purpose. Then it's a function then it's basically in the passer point of view, it's just like the header chain. It's an action indicator, right? It's a, an act. It indicates that the action needs to be taken. It's yeah. not an indication of the presence of the ancillary data. 
you know, it, that's so, at least so how I understand. From the puzzle point of view, uh, that's a, uh, yeah, I agree that, that that's a, uh, that, that's a, you know, and you basically uh, gave another uh, other uh, semantics to this bitmap. So that's a well, that's well, a, well, we haven't agreed what the semantics will be yet. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, if you use this to indicate the pre uh, the the presence of presence of uh, um, of the header, then that's not another thing. I'm, if you I'm, use I'm, it I'm, just I'm, to, I'm to sure. tell, okay, what's a. Um, uh, as some other to provide some other information, that's another thing. It's totally at different in terms of uh, 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 password design. At least from the name that we gave it, you know, we called it action indicator, not data indicator. Uh, it's an action. Yeah. So, so here I say it's a bitmap catalog, which means it's just like a catalog to tell you, okay, what will yeah, you it find is called for bitmap. I don't agree. We call it bitmap catalog. I don't agree with that naming. Uh, we call it an action bitmap. Uh, I, no, I, 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 I gave it this name is uh, the, um, what it means. Uh, just uh, provide a uh, catalog, right? Tell you okay. what you have. Uh, I, I, I don't want to provide a term, uh, accepted by this, uh, um, uh, working group, but it's just, a. Uh, I'm saying the, the meaning of this, this, this type of uh, bitmap. Uh, shall I continue? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. I think this is a, a very important. We have a discussions on to support in stack data and the post stack data. Um, but I think my high level position is uh, uh, we should try the best to uh, avoid in state uh, in stack data. Uh, so first, we need to understand what's the benefit of the in stack data. Uh, actually, um, I don't see any gain for that. So if any uh, post stack data exists, then we need to pass through the ISD up to the post stack data. So, that's so can I make a comment here? Uh, can uh, I uh, maybe finish the slides and uh, no, I, I, on this particular bullet point, okay. um, it, it's wrong. First of all, if the post stack data is end to end, none of the transit nodes need to parse. Uh, they don't need to look at the post stack data. Correct. Um, so we, we literally, we define that on purpose that there's hop okay. by hop post stack data and there's end to end. The second yeah. thing is that you don't have to parse through the in stack data. You you if you can skip through it, whether you do it by a length field or by, by looking at the continuation bits, uh, you can just skip through it and get to the post stack data. So I don't think this. this so statement uh, is correct. first point, I agree. Uh, I agree with you. The second point, as uh, I just said, you uh, based on the current design, you can note the skip the the the, the headers or bytes in in middle to 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 just parse some remote location. Um, um, that, all you have to do is go through the end of stack bits to the end and then say, okay, a, now we have the end of stack. As a parser, you need to pass all the bytes as far as to the last byte you want uh, in this package. You need to provide those headers to the deparser uh, for packet reassemble. Uh, re uh, so, I think you're, so, you're looking at a particular implementation. From the point of view of finding the post stack data, you just go through the label stack, uh, you find the end of stack bit, and then you say, okay, now I'm at the post stack so, data. So parsing is not, for me, okay, yeah, I'm parsing a bit, but I'm not parsing anything more than a bit. And, and you can do that in, you can do that as a seri series of serial actions, or you can do that fully in parallel, because those bits are, are always exactly four bytes apart. Yeah. Okay, um, so um, at least uh, for the current uh, um, ASICs, that's that's the case. Okay, you, you can well, see I mean, some other designs. I I agree. I don't know, but uh, for the current, uh, design, I think it's a, mm -hmm. I think it's a gross gross statement to say with for the current ASICs because there are lots of them out there. 
Yeah, and they don't all work the same way. It's a gross generalization, yes. Yes. Okay, then uh, second point is the in stack data is at the bottom of stack. Then basically there's no difference from the post stack data because uh, what, what you, you can also put it in the post stack data. It's also at the, just after the bottom stack. And so there's no gain, right? Um, and if uh, no post stack data and the in stack data is at the top of stack, then this is actually the, the benefit. So it means there's no need to scan other labels and the payload. Uh, we can just, uh, uh, after we check the in-stack data, uh, we can uh, stop stop, stop there. So this is as we respond to the uh, uh, Kiritis uh, first point. Then, uh, for example, if you, or, or in another case, you have only end-to-end -end post stack data. So you don't need to go, 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 go to there. Right, then in this case, uh, there are some gains on parsing speed. But uh, this will go to my last point. Do we really want to pay, uh, uh, um, optimize uh, the, the parser? Uh, um, but in, because uh, actually the, the header um, data, the data processing cost is much higher than the, than the parser. So maybe, um, this uh, the, the value of this is uh, actually limited. And uh, what's the other potential problems of the in stack data? Um, first uh, thing I think it, it will introduce too much other things, other semantics to the label stack. I think it will eventually make the label stack un unwieldy. And uh, uh, also, we this the we have the, this flag base to indicate the in, in stack data. Also, it's a fourth order of the in-stack data atom. And, uh, uh, and the number of flag bits limits the extensibility of uh, uh, in-stack data uh, atoms. And also, we because uh, uh, the application we will support it with the ISD can be very different, then they will have a different format of the ISD atoms. It will complicate the, uh, the packed parsing and the processing. So, so some in summary, uh, the, I think the key takeaways uh, uh, I, actually from the high level uh, uh, hardware view is that the parsing is uh, not a performance bottleneck at all in today. Um, the, maybe it's uh, you know in the in both the um, chip uh, area cost and the uh, time consumed for the packet uh, forwarding. Um, the parsing is only account for a very small part of the overall cost. So then any optimizations beyond the simple simple header chain is it, actually dubious. Um, and uh, we should follow the MDOS law and we don't over design because we put too much effort on there, but uh, the actual benefit is uh, maybe very limited, or as my current analysis shows, there's uh, no benefit at all, but just introduce some other uh, constraints to the, to the design. And instead of uh, inventing new header encoding style, we should uh, focus uh, really focus on the following issues. The first one is uh, total header overhead, because this is a really important, it's a make or break issue. Uh, due to the uh, header buffer size limitation. If uh, uh, we have uh, longer headers than the, can, what can be afforded um, parsed by the, by the chip, then basically um, the, the chip, we, we cannot support that. So that's a real issue. We, we, we should keep our header overhead as uh, low as possible. And also we should pay attention to the header processing uh, requirement, when we, which means instead of uh, uh, debating on the header design style, we should focus on the what's a, a how we will encode each header, because uh, the uh, uh, how and uh, what's a header function is if it's uh, feasible for hardware uh, implement, implementation, um, because that's very important. If you if we, want to uh, suppose this header as a header will be a fast pass function 
we need to um, really support it efficiently in hardware. So that's uh, so what uh, how to encode that uh, and uh, how to implement that in hardware. That's uh, that's uh, what we should really concern about. So if I can um, jump in there, um, the header overhead requirement, uh, the header overhead point that you make um, actually argues for using the bitmap and, and uh, the action indicators because two things. One is um, they're much more efficient from a space point of view. So if the header overhead is make or break, these are a much more efficient way of encoding stuff than using um, PLVs or, or um, next header processing uh, with length fields and so on. The second thing I'll say is that um, if header uh, overhead is a make or break thing, again, putting things in the PSD, uh, unless you're saying that our label stack should be very limited, uh, forget uh, ISD. The fact is that we're getting longer and longer label stacks today. So the, normally what you do when you process label stacks is you look at the top label, maybe you look at a couple more labels. Um, what ISD requires is that you go down and find the ISD uh, for the uh, action indicator, uh, special purpose label, and then you find the action uh, bits beyond that. But you don't have to go beyond that. You don't have to go to the bottom of the stack. Whereas if you say everything was going to be in the PSD and I have a label stack, but let's just say for the sake of argument, there's a hundred labels, no ISD, but just a hundred labels. You always have to go past all those hundred labels and go to the PSD to do things. So the whole point of the ISD is it's like a cache. It's keep things closer to the action. Don't push everything at the bottom of the label stack. So your point about head, header overhead is actually, in my mind, arguing for a, an action indicator and in-stack data as opposed to post-stack data. Um, I, I think, uh, first of all, the in-stack data can also be encoded in the same way and put it in the post-stack. So in terms of the size or, or overhead, it uh, it's can be the same, right? It, it doesn't mean the post stack data is uh, bigger than the in, in stack data. Sure, but then you, I mean, the, you pointed out correctly that doing a bit uh, thing means that uh, the order in which they appear uh, is determined on the order in which the bits are. So if you say that that's a negative, and uh, that's a negative for this new, I mean, the, okay, forget that. Um, the important thing I think is if header overhead is a make or break thing, Having things in stack means I don't have to process the entire label stack unless there is post stack data that I must look at. So the, the idea that I can process maybe the top label and then go three or four labels down and find the in stack data instead of going to the bottom of stack and processing data there, it, it, that's okay. a very it, key it, thing. Okay. It makes the feature here. it makes the feature available to more yeah. hardware. Yeah. Um, in yeah. the approach you're talking about, Karita. Yeah, um, I, I agree. So, so here you make two assumptions. The first one is uh, the label stack could be very big. Um, the second is the ISD must be closer to the top of stack. Um, so only these two cases are uh, conditions are met. Then what you said is uh, is, is is correct. I think it's a reality that label stacks today are much longer than label stacks back in the day, uh, where we thought, you know, four labels, five labels, that's the end of the story. Today, we have much bigger label stacks. So, so uh, uh, can you can you give a, uh, me a, some uh, real number? How large the uh, label stack could be? So are we trying to limit the size of the label stack here? Because we did that in the past and we failed. So if I tell you that the label stack is 10 labels, tomorrow something will happen and it'll become bigger than that. Um, so I, I, again, I don't think, uh, to go back to Stuart's point, um, the idea that we make more hardware available and, and the cycles to, pro pack, uh, to process packets uh, lower, um, that's, that's the whole point of in-stack data. 
the point of Instack data is not everything should be Instack data. And that's, you know, some of the things I was trying to talk about. The point of it is there's some, there's some critical information for forwarding that you keep close to the top of label stack and you reduce the amount of uh, processing and header uh, that you have to look at in order to get to that. So that's that's the point. I'm, I'm not saying that label stacks are going to be 100 labels deep. I'm saying that we don't have to put an artificial limit on how big the label stacks are. And we don't have to you know, uh, force, force our uh, hardware to always be able to process the full label stack. So, okay, the, the first thing is uh, um, the Actually, the MPS label overhead is a kind of a small one label is a four bytes. Then you, you own, you, if you have up to uh, 10 uh, labels, that's only 40 bytes. That's, a, that's like IPv4 header. Um, and uh, the second point is uh, at least for the current uh, um, ASIC uh, some, from some vendors, you you need to limit the number of uh, uh, possible uh, MPS labels supported in the stack. Uh, because otherwise, uh, if you have no limits, then you 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 have to give a, a maximum supported uh, um, uh, number of labels because that will determine the size of your um, finite, uh, your, your state machine. So in this example, you can see uh, in this example, it support at most uh, five MPS labels. Right. And presumably, what you would add, you would have some you would deal with this in the control plane to find out whether routing through that node would work or not uh, because it could only support five whereas you may be able to send the packet another way where it can do 10. Yeah so, so uh, I'm just uh, talking about uh, some limitations on that. Um, you so, so let me let me respond some, to that. Uh, some limit. Mm -hmm. So, so um, there are two different things. One is how many labels do you push onto a label stack? And the other is how many do you actually parse or, or do something with? So I can tell you that, um, I mean, both, both are potentially limitations, but when it comes to, if you look at the old style doing MPLS, uh, I mean, not even the old side, even with uh, segment routing, if you don't have any special purpose labels, you don't have PSD, if you just are doing state of forwarding, you only look at the top label. Uh, and then you know you might uh, pop it, or you might swap it, or you might push a couple of labels. But you're working at the top of stack. That's so the true. fact, so the fact that you have 40 labels or 100 labels doesn't matter to you. Uh, yeah, now, but... if you have to initially, can, can let me finish, please. Um, so if you initially have to push 100 labels, that's that could be an issue for many. Uh, it is an issue for many hardware, uh, many types of hardware. But in terms of processing it, you're just looking at the top of stack and then saying, what do I do? If you yeah. then say, I have ISD, you can say, I'll put it within the range that someone can look at. But if you everything goes in PSD, you're then, you're, you have a real strong limitation on how deep your label stack can be. Right, right, so that's my point. If you only need to look at the top of stack, then everything's fine. It doesn't matter how many labels you have. But whenever you need to examine any header after the label stack, then you 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 are in trouble. So that's why. No, that's not true. You just stack. had five, right? So, I mean, if you if you put the ISD within the top five, I, and five is no longer the case. I mean, we used but, to do five, but we do we do ten today. If what, you put what, the ISD within that, you know, there's no PSD. I mean, it's very I'm not assuming to... anything. I'm, I'm saying if if it is a requirement that uh, every node has to process PSD and the PSD, you know, and the label stack is 10 deep or 20 deep or 50 deep, that becomes an issue. Yeah, we have to consider this case, right? Because that's, a, that's what, we, once we decide we will have a PSD, then we, we must handle this issue. Um, I'm not sure what you're saying because you just said that header overhead is a huge issue, and then you're saying everything must be in the PSD, so we must deal with this. So no, you're no, saying I'm, all I'm saying, hardware has to, to. Yeah, what are you saying? 
So you maybe you said, okay, if I allow ISD, then in some case that you, you can, you know, keep the head part, uh, head and overhead smaller, uh, then it, it, the hardware can su support it. But my, my point is that if you have a PSD, then you will in this network pass, you don't know how the user will use it. If one user decide to use a PSD, then you, you have to keep the PSD in the scope of the, the, your header buffer. So then, then if you have SD or PSD, it really doesn't matter here. So let me replace what you just said. If I want data that I want um, more nodes to parse, and I don't want to do that at the expense of saying, you can only have a label stack of depth 10. And let's let's not use five because nobody does five labels. Uh, I mean, I think most people now try to do more than that. Uh, older hardware accepted. So if you say um, people must parse the PSD and I'm going to put my data in the PSD, uh, you have to limit the, the size of your label stack. If you say, I have this notion of an ISD, then you at least have a chance that you can say, put five forwarding labels and then put your ISB uh, and maybe the ISB takes another five labels. It's within the scope of 10 labels that I can parse. And, uh, and then when I get, uh, if I'm popping labels, when I get to the ISB being near the top, then um, I move it around or maybe have multiple copies. Find a solution to that. But now it's in the scope for many more types of hardware to do it. And it's not just about whether they can do it, how much it costs to do it. If you say the data must always be in the PSD, then um, it becomes very hard to say, I can have a label stack that's of your know, open length. Uh, you, you have to limit your label stack to a certain length. And we tried that in the past and limiting the label stack depth is not a, a viable way of um, proceeding. Okay, I, I agree. There is a chance to do that, but that's only a chance. Uh, and uh, as long as uh, it, if if I do need PSD, then the, the problem ar arise, right? And the second, I want to ask, what's your criteria to put something in, uh, in stack and put something post stack? What was the criteria that be? I've already said this a couple of times, it's in the draft. Um, essentially, it needs to be something that's critical for forwarding, uh, and it needs some, to be something that is uh, very limited in size. So um, essentially, for every post stack, uh, sorry, in stack data that um, has an action bit set, the corresponding data well, it could be zero bits, uh, zero bytes, or it could be four bytes. But but we don't want uh, you know an action bit set where the corresponding data is like you know 16 bytes or 64 bytes. So so the criteria are one, it should be concise, and two, it should be something critical for uh, forwarding. So for example, um, most types of uh, IOM, uh, even the flow uh, ID, which initially we were thinking might be in the in stack data, have been pushed to post stack data. And uh, so you put the stuff in the in-stack data that is really important. And then you get to um, uh, things like, if my forwarding engine has cycles, yeah, go to the post-stack data, there's stuff there that's interesting, but it's not crucial. If there's stuff in the post-stack data that's crucial, you're forcing our forwarding engines to take the penalty of getting to the post-stack data, which some can do, but not all can do. Yeah, so so I, I, I what I can see is uh, uh, if uh, you use a single bit, is enough to indicate the action, then that's a clear uh, sign it should be kept in, in stack. And uh, other things- It's more than that. Smaller, if this is, can be uh, limited to one, one label size, then it's also, possible candidate and it's a critical. That's but, exactly what we have today. We have um, we have bits that have zero data, like no further fast without, we have bits that have uh, effectively uh, one label's worth of data, which is entropy label and uh, the 
um, slice identifier, and then you know there could be more such bits. The best way to think of in-stack data is it's a cache. It's something that's near your instruction uh, processing engine, uh, so that you can process it without too much overhead. And the post-stack data is more like your main memory. So sometimes you have to take the the hit and go to main memory, but there is a cache where you can do things uh, much more easily. And so you don't want to put everything in the cache, you want to put the things that are important uh, that, that you need. It's not a perfect analogy, but I think it's a decent analogy. Hi, Grady. Uh, yeah. Just want to mention that uh, we discussed about the possible position of the ISD information in the label stack. Uh, if we want to use it for the hop by hop, uh, I think our conclusion is it, it will be after all the forwarding labels, right? In that case, uh, maybe it will be uh, close to the bottom stack label. In the, and I think some analysis about the uh, uh, cost of the ISD and the PSD in that case will be uh, needed. No, no. It, uh, it, does, uh, it so doesn't I, need to be. It doesn't need to be after all the forwarding labels. It only yeah, needs, exactly. It can, it can be repeated if that is expedient in terms of the um, on-path routers being able to find it. Yeah. So that's exactly what we did with the um, entropy label. But exactly. initially, we said. Entropy label would be, you know, right after the couple of forwarding labels that you have, and then when we got to deep label stacks, uh, we basically said you you can repeat the entropy label, and so if you can parse ten labels, you can put the entropy label your know, nine labels down, and then when you get there, you pop the entropy label, throw it away because there's another entropy label, another five, well, another further nine labels down. So the, if I agree with you completely. If you say that put all the forwarding labels first, there is no point of ISD. You might as well use PSD. The whole point of ISD is you can keep it closer to the top of stack. And then we have to find a mechanism whereby that ISD doesn't go away when you reach that part. Um, either you throw it away because you know there's another copy or something else. The something else turns out to be fairly complex, but uh, you know there are other things you can do. But if the ISD is going to be almost at the bottom of stack, there's no point. You might as well just do PSD. One yeah. So related, uh, one related comment to what what Kiriti is talking, and I remember we talked about it is if the path is multiple segments, uh, we could have different ISD for different segment. Um, you know that that's one advantage of the ISD presence is. You can apply different ISD uh, to different segments of the path. Yes, I mean in particular, it, it, w w if you wanted to apply them in post-stack data, you'd have to have some instance identifier that we agreed, and you have to have some instance parsing sort of system. Whereas you're quite quite right, uh, Tarek, that if you want to do a per segment thing, uh, for example, don't reroute on this segment, um, then um leaving it in the stack allows you to pop it when it's no longer needed hey guys i need to drop i'm actually late for my next meeting mm. but um I, um uh, yeah you you guys decide if you want to continue I'm done. I'm done. But i need to go yeah uh we we're out of time but uh but i'm happy to continue if uh, if the four four of us okay with that uh I see people already leaving. I think um, uh, it, it's probably best to resume next week, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's a little resume. late for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it is, G. Uh, thanks. So, shall we resume next week? Uh, I think we can, but uh, I would need to have some something to put in the agenda so we have a good start did, uh, did we get to the end of how you slide deck uh, are, you? are you still there uh you, you excuse me Stuart, what do you want 
you get to the end of your slide deck? Back to my slide. Share again. Did, did you so, did you do did you get to the end of your presentation? Uh, basically, the other slides okay. are some uh, some other um uh yeah appendix. Uh, no 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 need to cover. Oh, okay, and you're going to make the slides available to everyone. Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah, maybe the first uh, the slides I presented today. And um, so where where should I uh, put it? Uh, on the wiki or just uh, send through email? Mm, on the wiki would be. I'll upload it to the wiki. Okay. Right. Okay. So um, I think the chairs need to decide. I mean, there's clearly an active discussion on this. There's clearly many unresolved things. There are clearly questions that need to be asked in the various um, forwarding vendors to understand uh, what their reaction to some of these statements would be. Um, so it's really up to the chairs whether they want to, the MPLS chairs, whether they want to continue this or whether they want to stimulate some. Uh, research um, across the community and then come back to this point. Next week, we probably need to look at requirements, I think. I think so too, yeah. Uh, that's why I'm a little bit reluctant to what we should do for, uh, for this type of discussion. If we put it out two weeks, then we I think we have a better better situation. Yes, yes. I think that this 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 discussion probably needs to be. You probably need a couple of weeks of of information gathering, if you can even get it in a couple of weeks, um, and then re re return to this with any other information. Okay. okay. I, I, and I am I am acutely aware that one major vendor is not on this call. Uh, There's no Cisco people, and uh, you're going to touch. Rakesh is Cisco, isn't there? Yeah. Is he? Uh, oh, I beg your pardon, Rakesh. So, uh, yeah, I'm also from Cisco. Uh, okay. Well, can you speak to? Can you speak to someone? Are, are you? If are you familiar with this, or if not, can you find out some information from inside the company to find out whether this direction? aligns with their direction. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I can check with uh, our team and see. Yeah. Um, so by the way, uh, Stewart, um Sorry, have, Rakesh, I didn't realize uh, where you were, sorry. Yeah, so uh, this is Jagan, Jagan here. Uh, people call me Jags. Right. So, um, yeah, so uh, we have uh, published a draft uh, yesterday uh, regarding right. this. Uh, this is, you know, like with, uh, by extending the uh, Bruno's existing draft. Um, uh, so probably, you know, like, uh, we can discuss more on this. Okay. So we involved, uh, our team, uh, 1 of the co-author is, uh, from, uh, the ASIC team. Okay. So he also can give some inputs. Good. I mean, I, that, that, all, all I'm concerned about is to make sure that. That we talk to that, 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 um, uh, yeah, we're not just taking 1 perspective on this and uh, we're taking the broad industry perspective on, um changes to such an important part of the um, um, core infrastructure. Uh, sure, actually, uh, I'll check with his availability and then uh, if he's uh, available, okay. probably we'll ask him to attend next week. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, well, next week or the week after, whenever it is that uh, Lower is going to reschedule it. Sure. Uh, 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 just now, I have the feeling that we need to discuss requirements next week. So, okay. tentatively two weeks out. Okay. So, we, we're not going to have a meeting next week? Or? No, no, we're going to. Oh, but yeah. to topic next week is requirements. The okay. topic the week after will come back to parsing. Oh, I see. So that'll allow people to go and talk to their teams and find out what the parsing constraints are. Okay. Uh, I have a question about uh, slides. Uh, they are very useful and helpful. Uh, would they be available on the wiki? That's what yeah, you said. I think how you just agreed to do that. H how you just agreed to do, to put them on the wiki? Yes. Okay. So, um, thank you. Hey, hey, Lua and Steve, like, so are we going to continue the agenda for today, next week? Uh, 
because we, we haven't completed right, right. the agenda, right? So one of the uh, presentation is uh, our new draft. That's what. Yeah, go on. Lower. Yeah, so uh, we do what we can. Uh, the um, I didn't think it was correct to interrupt this discussion. It okay. needs to go on. Yeah. Uh, if we run into a similar situation on the requirements discussion next next week, yeah, when we need to postpone. But sooner or later, we will actually reach uh, the present. The, those presentations. So, uh, Noah, if if we get backlogged, you should you should consider another meeting, an additional meeting sometime, or a longer meeting. The um, if we get backlogged. If we, actually, it's we we are always a little bit backlogged, but not dramatically so. So, uh, I think. Uh, I shouldn't say this, but I, currently I don't think it's necessary to have another meeting. Okay, I'm just saying that if you get I, yeah, back yeah, up, yeah, yeah, they understand you, but uh, we are getting close, but we're not there yet. Okay. Okay, I'll uh, stop the recording now in case. Uh, uh, wait. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, Someone, oh, yeah, uh, Jax put a, uh, a URL in the uh, or a document in the in the chat. It's yeah. probably worth read, reading that. But now you can. Close the recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> 